Good morning. So today's video is about sleep. Sleep is probably the single most important function of day-to-day -day life, and yet it probably is the most overlooked as well. So many people struggle with sleep. I put out a little Instagram feeler yesterday, how many people have trouble sleeping, and the results were out of this world. For something that regulates weight loss, hormonal function, recovery, um, poor sleep can like literally reduce gray matter in your brain. It is the single most important thing of day-to-day -day life and so many people overlook it. So in today's video, we're gonna deep dive in all the different ways you should structure your day-to-day -day life to get optimal sleep and really, really get on the fast track of productivity and success. All right, so for starters, we're gonna tackle the full day here. Most of these videos start in like a dark, dim room, you know, turn off your phone, this, that, and the other thing, limit caffeine, we'll get to that. But at the top of your list, it starts first thing in the morning. If you want quality sleep at night, you need to get sun exposure first thing in the morning. So we're out here, it's 610, I'm sitting on my deck. This is something I build in every day as part of my routine. I like to spend 10 minutes out here in nature. As the sun rises, I rise. Um, getting proper sun exposure sets your biological clock for the day. You are working with your natural circadian rhythm. If you think about it from a biological standpoint, uh, houses and modern light, like all of this is new technology in the big scheme of things. So we actually, from an evolutionary standpoint, the sun dictated almost everything we did and our, bio our biology aligns with that. So getting up first thing in the morning, getting some exposure to natural light, it's gonna set your circadian you know, being for the rest of the day. So when you start giving sleep the respect it deserves, you'll start intentionally designing your day in such a manner that it's gonna help you get your actual results. So like, when you start thinking about it like this, right? You wanna lose weight. Everyone seems to wanna lose weight. That's like a key goal of a lot of people today. When you understand that poor sleep can impact glucose levels in such a manner that it actually spikes your cravings for carbs and junk food throughout the day, you realize like getting quality sleep is super important. So intentionally structuring your day in such a manner that you're gonna get a restful quality night's rest, it's gonna help you reach all of your goals across the board. So everyone loves their coffee. I make it strong, I make it 5.30, six o'clock. Usually I'm sitting out there as the sun comes up enjoying my cup of coffee. Caffeine can be one of the greatest detractors of sleep. Now, I think it's important to cut it off by noon. A lot of experts will say 2 p.m. is like the absolute latest, but again, it just comes back to your priorities. I love my coffee. I start my morning with it. I'll have genius consciousness early in the morning too when I need to lock in and get some you know, high level thinking done. But net net, you need to make a commitment to cut out caffeine, uh, call it by noon, if you really want quality sleep. All right, so you started your day with sun exposure. You establish the intention of having quality sleep. You cut out coffee at noon. Like it's important to understand that as the afternoon hours come around, you need to, again, respect your circadian biology and begin to settle down. So this means no stressful activities, right? Nothing that's gonna rev you up or fire you up. No workouts uh, later in the day. And again, just begin to establish that intention of winding down as the sun begins to set. So let me preface this video by saying getting quality sleep is entirely within your control. Way too often, I see people just automatically chalk up an excuse that they have trouble sleeping or they've always had trouble sleeping. The reality is you're probably making one of the critical mistakes that so many people make and aren't even aware of. Here is the number one mistake I see so many people making and it drives me crazy. It is 10 p.m well past your bedtime. And what are you doing? You're sitting in a dark room with a tiny blue screen shining directly into your eyeballs, telling your body it's time to be awake right now. That disrupts melatonin production. That disrupts, I mean, really a number of things, but just don't do it. That's the first mistake you might be making. So continuing on that notion of artificial light, that, the all-powerful sun, that is what we were biologically programmed to rise and sleep with. Now, that being said, artificial light is a new technology. And I'm realistic, right? I understand that as the sun sets, we might have work to do. Like, I live it, right? I'm often on my computer till 8, 9 o'clock getting stuff done, answering emails, whatever it might be. All I ask is that if that is your life, 
you probably should look at investing in a pair of blue blocking glasses. What these things do is they filter out artificial light and help your body still naturally uh, adjust to winding down and, and you know keeps melatonin production optimal. So give these a shot. As the sun goes down, put these on and they are gonna help maintain your body a state of homeostasis as it pertains to your circadian rhythm. All right, so another big mistake I see people make, and then I wanna jump right into optimizing the sleep environment across the board. For one, put your phone in airplane mode, all right? Like too many times we leave it active and those little buzzes or dings or really any EMF whatsoever is going to disrupt sleep quality. Like you might not see it, you might half turn or whatever it might be, but it is going to result in suboptimal sleep. So plug your phone in and put it in airplane mode. All right, do what you can to eliminate EMF. Some people go as far as disconnecting Wi-Fi in the house, and there's been studies to show that that will result in better sleep. All right, next, optimizing your sleep environment. And this is very important. Remove television from the bedroom. And that might be hard for some people, right? To make it a habit to lay in bed and watch TV to fall asleep, but it's going to result in poor sleep quality, right? It ties back to that shining light in your eyes, plus the stressors from the TV, like it's very suboptimal. So you need to treat your bedroom as a sanctuary for proper sleep, all right? A couple things to properly do that. Only sleep in this room. And there's one other thing you can do, but I won't get into that in this video. But this room is really for one of two things, sleep being one of them. Proper temperature, it's very important. You want it cool, right? You want a cool environment. Ideally, that's in the, the 60 range. Um, you don't wanna overheat. Uh, it's been shown that, that lower temperatures result in better sleep quality. So make that a point. Next, black out the room. You want no light whatsoever. And look, like I acknowledge they're expensive. Sleep masks go a long way as well. So I got a, I got one of those um, gravity sleep masks. So it applies a, a little pressure as well for anxiety and stress and that sort of thing. I've been sleeping good. So a small investment in a sleep mask can make a huge difference in your sleep environment. All right, so really quick, I want to highlight some technologies. So I've got Swannies that I already spoke to. Those are my blue blockers. I have an Aura Ring. I also use Whoop. So these are various gadgets that I've used to really get analytical. Um, I mean, the blue blockers aside, like those are just a function of blocking blue light. But Aura Ring, it's an awesome device. It tracks HRV above all things. Um, so something I put on at night, you can actually wear it throughout the day. It'll track steps and some of those biometrics. But Overall, HRV is the best part of this one. It'll uh, keep track of like body temperature, REM sleep, deep sleep. It is a very sophisticated device and I'm a huge fan. Um, Whoop is another one. It also operates off HRV. They're relatively similar, like having both might be a little bit overkill, but I like Whoop on the recovery front. So it's more athletically based and it tracks um, training and some of those different metrics and then applies it to your sleep quality. So between these two, I'm able to get pretty analytical. Like, look, I understand at the end of the day, we are all human. You can't beat yourself up about a bad night's sleep, but what you can do is be aware and constantly experiment and tweak and adjust and really strive for the best sleep possible so you can live the best life possible. That's my philosophy. So look, like the whole point of this isn't that, you know, like, oh, I get amazing sleep every night. No, that's like super far from the truth. I struggle with it like ongoingly. I'm just aware of it and trying to constantly improve upon it. I guess it's been developing that intuitive understanding of my own sleep and then trying to apply it in a manner that makes sense. It's made a huge difference for me and I feel like it's really contributed to ideal productivity, um, you know, like always the best it can possibly be. But again, it's important not to beat yourself up. Like y'all know me, like I run, I run a business, I'm doing all these different things. I can have a stressful week and I will see my sleep suffer but I use that information to help settle myself down and try to alleviate stress as much as I can so it's not compounded. So that's my intention here, is really just to hopefully help you bring own awareness to your own habits and then approve upon it. All right, y'all, so it's getting late, sun's beginning to set, but before we go, I've got one more thing. Everyone's looking for that magic pill, and no, I'm not going to just shamelessly plug my supplements here. I'm gonna cover a couple different nutritional tips that you can utilize to fast track this whole process and sleep a little bit better. So another huge mistake I see people make is relying on wine to put them asleep. Wine actually disrupts REM sleep. And while there are some health benefits and I'm not opposed to drinking wine, 
giving yourself ample time and really probably sticking to one glass, uh, ample time to properly metabolize the alcohol before falling to sleep is pretty important. So if you're one of those people that counts on their nightly glass to put them out, it's not a sustaining habit. Be cognizant of your wine consumption. All right, y'all, so supplements and nutrition. First, again, it starts with that whole idea of less is more. One thing people always depend on, and I really encourage you not to, is melatonin. And a lot of companies even claim non-habit forming, which should be an illegal claim. For some reason, it's not. But melatonin, melatonin is a hormone that your body produces naturally as the sun begins to set and you begin to get tired. So when you take this from a supplement, it throws off your hormonal function. It tells your body you need less natural melatonin produced. So you become dependent on that supplement. Um, really anything over one milligram of melatonin will in the long term cause issues. So for starters, no melatonin. All right, next, jumping into things that can positively improve sleep quality. Really anything that increases relaxation or reduces stress. Ashwagandha, that's a big one. Kava, that's another one that can have some issues on people's stomachs, but has been a great proven stress reliever. L-theanine, that's another one that helps calm the nervous system. Magnesium, L-glycine, another one. One thing I consistently take, because again, I try to do it as naturally as possible, but I will take L-glycine powder. Four grams, it's been clinically shown to improve sleep quality. I recommend investing in this, it's pretty cheap. This is a brand I trust. Uh, another one is magnesium, right? Like for a number of reasons, our bodies are often low in magnesium relative to what they need to be. Last but not least, if you guys ever need it, hit me up, Genius Sleep Aid. I will send out samples of this. It's a very simple formula. I don't take it every night. Um, one ingredient that I really wanna highlight in here is rudocarpine. And this is actually an ingredient that helps filter out caffeine from your body. So I will take this when I know I've been abusing the stimulants a little bit, because like I said, it's just how life goes, right? We got a lot to get done. Caffeine can be your friend. Caffeine can be addicting. Rudocarpine helps your body filter out caffeine, provides a natural reset. Be aware, some people actually wake up with a headache when taking this because they get that caffeine withdrawal because it's flushing it out of your body. Um, also in the formula, we have a gram of L-glycine. Why a gram when the clinically recommended dose is four? Because nobody wants to take a million capsules, so I'm very honest with that. A gram is enough to positively influence sleep quality. Um, we also have L-theanine, and overall it's a fantastic product. So seriously, if anyone wants samples of this, I'm happy to get them out. I'm all for helping people improve their sleep quality. So that summarizes the supplements and nutrition side of things. Remember, tea actually provides a good alternative for a lot of this too. It's anything that helps your body uh, reduce stress, reduce anxiety, and wind down as the later hours start to come around. Sleep is everything. And yet, as a society, we seem to glamorize chronic sleep deprivation. Don't fall for that narrative. Let's optimize our sleep sleep smarter, and get the most out of day-to-day -day life. As the sun goes down, you go down.